It's going to be a very different edition of the KSO show today, which is always is brought to you by Peel State Bank Legacy Insurance. That's not different. We are recording for a different place right now. We're at Bourbon and Baker. Myself and Derek Young are. Derek, your first trip into Bourbon and Baker. You haven't had anything too exciting yet. You got a water, you got a coffee, you looked at the menu. But early thoughts on Bourbon and Baker. I like the vibe, I like the atmosphere, and I like the coffee. It's, yeah, so through, win, win, win. Uh, Flanders is here. He'll also be producing the pod, but Ooh. he's just eating dinner. He won't be on the mic because for a, a number of reasons, but one of which being I don't know that his knowledge about football recruiting is really is really any good at all. So here's the idea. This will all be about football recruiting. And Derek and I talked about this the last two days, how we wanted to do this. And we thought, let's just have like an on-air workshop of coming up with, you know, things like the Roster Recruiting Center, things like Derek's Big Board. And then at the end of this, wrap it up by saying, here's kind of a perfect scenario to how we can finish the class. So, Derek, I know you've done prep for this, but you're not, like, completely prepped, are you? No, not completely. Okay. Because, I mean, it's good to have one of us prepped, you know, to, like, get some of this stuff done. But um, part of the – I think the fun of this edition, I hope, is listening to it uh, as we're, we're through all this stuff again. So um, we're at Bourbon and Baker. We're going to eat lunch. They're going to bring us lunch. We're not going to eat on the mic or gross stuff like that, but we've told them, hey, uh, you know, if we're on the microphone, please come interact with us still. Uh, you're a great place, all that good stuff. So – uh, don't mind that too much if it happens. So I think, Derek, to establish this into, into work going forward, I think we have to know how many scholarships we want to project in this class. And we'll say this kind of stuff a million times throughout this pod. Like, these are just our, our projections. We might come up with a number, and you argue it's one higher as a listener. It's one higher, it's one lower, it's two higher. None of us can truly know that answer. But we're going to try to get our best educated guess is what we're going to try to do. So K-State, after the news of who left last week? Well, I'm blanking on it. Kenyon Reed. Kenyon Reed. After Kenyon Reed left, I have K-State down to 81 scholarship players. Uh, on a team out of 85. I still have K-State with 24 scholarship seniors. That means, in theory, you've got the 24 openings created by the seniors plus the four existing openings. You have 28 scholarships to give. It's not usually as simple as just adding those two numbers together, Derek. But it, in this instance, that might be a good number. You know, what do you think about that? Tens a working number, uh, a good working number right now. And we were thinking it might be only six or seven, but uh, probably as of two months ago. But the numbers already increased since. I would say as long as they're okay with the um, the twenty five number with countbacks and everything. Right, right. That it can maybe push to the. It'll be ten to twelve. Right, right. I mean, the countbacks matter, too. I yep. mean, how many can you count back? I'm not going to lie and mislead the listeners. I haven't gone back and done research to see how many can. I feel super confident that they could do a number like 28 to 30 like we're talking about. With no issue. I'm always more conservative, and I always go lower. I think you always are willing to go a notch higher. You just put the difference and say 29 for the purpose of this? Yeah, I think cause if I had to guess, I think that's probably the number. Let's do 29. So we're going to do 29 is the number of scholarships K-State has for the purpose of this piece. And after we're done doing this, I'm going to go into the roster recruiting center. So people who are listening to this can go see this all reflected in there. That's what we came up with. Derek, as always, is releasing you know new big boards. He's already done 14 of them, I think, for this class. You'll see one of those that reflects this. So if you're if you don't you know uh, if you don't score at home, right? If you're not scoring this at home, we'll have this written down for you later too. So we're at 29 scholarships for K State. That's going to up what we believe to be. We I we initially predicted this class as 27, and we did position by position breakdowns for how many they're going to take as 27. Now we're at 29. So I agree with that number. We're going to add two. What that means is now I want to walk through Derek and go spot by spot and say how many scholarships do they think they should have given to the spot. Uh, quarterback, they have two on scholarship now after the departure of John Holcomb. Uh, Nick Ost is certainly a guy who could go on scholarship at some point, just a sophomore. They have a commitment from Will Howard. Uh, without putting words in your mouth, that we're both in agreement they're not taking another quarterback in this class. I don't think so. I would be surprised. I mean, yeah, stuff can always happen. But I don't expect that. So we're not adding any more quarterback. Running back, I originally, we originally predicted three being needed. They have two commitments and Chris Vaughn and Keon Mosey or Deuce Vaughn, depending on what you want to call him. Deuce sounds a little cooler probably. Um, the number I had was three, which is one more. Would you stick with that, D.Y.? One more, you think, at running back? It'll, I think it's probably two, but they'll take best player available yeah. to make it. So you think they possible. would take So you think they would take a third? I mean, but yeah, two's the number, but they would take a third if what? that. So yeah. So if we have, we think we have 11 scholarships open right now, right? 18 current commitments against 29 openings. So one could go to a running back. Fullback, H-back, I think they're done. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Hot, yes, tight uh, wide receiver. They've got one committed right now in Jalen Travis. Do you think they would like to take another, or do you think they would stay at one there? 
I think it's kind of like running back. Well, they'll go to two if this right scenario plays out. So it's a one to two scenario. I'm going to write down one then um, just to see how it adds up. If we get to the end of the day, we're at 13, mm -hmm. the first ones I'm pulling for, then are probably wide receiver and running back. Uh, tight end, they have two commitments. I, you know, I, I don't have anything solid. I have nothing beyond just pure speculation on this. I have some gut feelings that they would take some more experienced help at tight end. But I, I think for the purposes of this, I would just leave it at no more. But what do you think? I, th I kind of think that you're right, that there, there's probably something that could happen there or at least something to monitor. Yeah. We don't really have any targets to speak of. Right, right. So maybe just leave it at zero for now and yeah. move on from there. We'll see that. Hey, thank you so much. Appreciate it. So Flando just got brought to him. I'm going to set this here, Flando. Just don't do something like mess. Uh, he got the chicken and waffles, and I got a um, – a chicken and a biscuit. So I'm very excited about that. So tight end, we're going to leave it at no more added right now. I would say we agree on that for now. DUI will come back to it. Depending on what the numbers say. Offensive line. Our initial projections when this started were to take five in this group. They've already taken three. So I think we would say they probably want, at least according to our initial projection. What is that, DUI? Thank you. Lamb, Lamb kebab. Lamb kebab? That looks fancy, dude. Holy cow. Um... We may, pa we may pause this at some point and eat our food. Uh, after we get through the offense or something like that, we'll come right back and do this. So offensive line, D.Y., we had five. They've got three, so we're assuming at least two more. Would you leave it at two or you tack on a third? What do you think of our offensive line? Best case scenario for them, and probably a working number for them, might, for the total, might be six. I, I, th I can see a, another high school offensive tackle and two junior college. Yeah, I would agree with that. If if we're saying six, that has us at three more there. Well, we'll leave that for now and come back and check it out. We'll get through these numbers first. Then we'll eat. We'll come back and we'll talk uh, a lot more about this kind of stuff. Let's flip over to defensive tackle. We wrote down initially they needed three. Um, already have commitments from two. I mean, high school guys. Of course, Ronald Triplett, definitely high school defensive tackle. Taylor Warner, you've seen play in person. You've seen at camp. He could be either, so we don't know how he counts. Right now, I have him as a defensive tackle in my numbers just to put him somewhere, but it could be the other side. So the point is, if they're taking three, and again, our initial projections, now we have two more scholarships to give out. Uh, how many more are they taking? Are they taking two more? You know, which would give them four if you count Warner. What do you think? What's your working number for D tackle right now? I have Taylor Warner as a defensive tackle still. I know that there's some discussion there, sure. but uh, I th I think that a cooler head could prevail. That where you you would think that he's just fits more into the class as a defensive lineman. So that gives you two. Right. Uh, and then if you consider that they're still kind of looking at a high school defensive tackle. And definitely junior college. Right. Um, I think a that minimum number's two. More, minimum right? two more junior college. Minimum two more, and it could even be. We'll yeah. leave it at two. We're going to see what two leaves us at our number. Let's go down to the end. Projected before the season, needing three scholarship players at this position at the end. Only commitment is right now is Nate Matlack, of course, the first commitment of this class, I believe. So the number suggests two more at this position. Is that what you would say, or has that number changed for you since the start? Of the and every time I throw these numbers at you, it's what we wrote at the start of the season. Yep. So they may well have changed. I'd say yeah. they, they're definitely recruiting and targeting as if they want two more high school defensive ends. And so I think that's it. And then they've also offered a JUCO from Butler. But I wonder if that only fits in if there's room at the end. Yeah. So yep. three's the number. But if – because we're going to get to a point where best player available comes in. But no doubt. But three is the number. It's a right. defense end. So uh, two to or three total. Three total. So got it. Perfect. Yeah. Linebacker we've got down. So I got some text on the phone in there. I'm getting dis easily distracted. Linebacker we wrote down. Now this is interesting. Before the season to take three. I have down. And I probably need to update this to be quite honest. I have down two. Of course, Jeremiah Harris and Demarcus Hayes. You told us for all Demarcus Hayes. Might be a nickel. You know, is that possible? Where would you leave him, I guess, right now for the purpose of this piece? I think he's going to stay as a linebacker. Perfect. I, I know that there was some uh, discussion even with him that a nickel could be, you know, in the cards. But I still think he's a linebacker. And they're not necessarily recruiting that position as if they'll take another one unless someone like Tevin McKelvey late. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, that leaves us at two. Uh, two linebackers. Maybe need – maybe – we had him initially taking three. You look at names like Jalen Harrell, Kershawn Fisher, Ted McKelvey, the ones we've talked about. So how many more would you add on linebacker under the two they already have? 
Meaning, would they take one more? Would they take two more? What are you thinking? Uh, I, right now, I would actually think the number is zero. Right. And then Fisher and Harrell are on there. They're actually defensive end prospects okay. at this yeah. point for Kansas State. McKelvey is if you have room at the end. So Then let's put zero. Yep. Yeah, let's put zero on that. We can adjust that, too. And I'm going to put a little star to adjust those guys, Fisher and Harrell, to be defensive ends. Corner is something that, you know, had some adjustment to as of late. Before the season, we wrote three scholarships to use at this position. Commitments, of course, from guys like McCall and Son, Joseph Wilson. Secondary guys can be interesting, too, because they can play multiple spots or whatever. But now, of course, like you said earlier, can read out uh, off the team. So does this number come back to two more now, three more? What are you thinking from what you've seen at corner, how many more they'd like to take there? We're counting nickel into this, and I imagine we are with the corners. Yeah, we should. Yeah, good call. Um, it's, it's probably two more. Yeah, so two more there. I'm just going to tell you the number now. If we have one receiver, one, two, five, seven, nine, we're at 11. So that's 11 out right now. So we haven't done safety yet. It's the only thing we haven't taken. And they're going to take another safety. And you think they're going to take a safety too. So is it, is it one or more than one? One? One safety. One, one okay. One safety. So let's read them down. I have right now, and some of these, again, we'll, we'll, we'll get this under wraps because some of this was ORs or best players available. So running back one, wide receiver one, tight end none, O-line three, D-tackle two, D-in two, linebacker zero, cornerback two, safety one. That's one plus two, which is three, plus two, which is five, plus two, which is seven, plus three, which is ten. Plus one is 11, plus one is 12. So that's 12. We have 11 left. So we're going to go to break after we kind of nail this number down. Then we're going to move into the next part of this, which is looking at we've got to pull one off of somewhere. And like you said, what we're, it's all, it will become best pair available. So just because we pull off a receiver, for example, if we do that, doesn't mean they wouldn't take a receiver in their best class. But if you had to knock a number off, D.Y., is it, is it knocking? Is it knocking off a running back or a receiver? I think the rest feel more more like needs. Yeah, the, right. The receiver, and running back, one of them's getting knocked off. And yeah. for example, if they Kai Thomas is coming, they're not going to tell him no. So Correct. I would knock off receiver. But this is the kind right. of conversation and kind of discussion that's happening in, in their meeting rooms exactly. and going over it. And why you know I, I'm saying pump the brakes on receiver because they kind of have enough on the roster as is. Right. Because they're getting to a numbers crunch at this point. It, exactly. Re receiver. You probably only have room for it if maybe you miss a guy you really like somewhere else. Exactly, exactly. And that was perfectly said. We're not going to have a receiver perhaps included in some of our talk going forward, but one may fall in DY's top 20 later, and one may be in an ideal class because the best player, best player available needs of their positions, et cetera. But we are going to take a brief break because we're selfish and we want to eat here Bourbon and Baker. The other good news is the break for you will be like, like falling asleep and waking up because it's going to start as soon as we hit play again. So we'll be right back on the KSO Show from Bourbon and Baker. I got, a good, I got great ideas. All right, segment two, Flando, of this football recruiting extravaganza from Bourbon and Baker. All right, three, two, and one. We have finished our meal. It was delicious. Uh, DY has ordered what they call a GFBC here. He's having one What's drink. What's that stand for? I don't know. Probably a good friend, Bourbon and Coke. <laughs> and he's going to have one of those, and they're pretty delicious. And, yeah, it's what time is it? It's 101, and he's going to have one of them, you know, so it is, it is what it is. Um... You're a good man, D.Y. So in segment one, we established what we thought would be the needs remaining in K-State's recruiting class. K-State currently has 18 commitments. We have settled on a class size of 29. We went through the last segment and came to determinations on positional needs left by number. We have one running back, three offensive linemen, two defensive tackles, two defensive ends, no line. I, I didn't mean to say the zeros. There's some, I'm going to leave the zeros out. I'm starting over. One running back. Three offensive linemen, two D tackles, two D ends, two cornerbacks, corners, one safety. So if I didn't say it there, we didn't have it as a need remaining in this class. Doesn't mean they can't take a kid there or won't take a kid there if he is a talented player and the best available. But we have to draw the line somewhere, DY. So as you're building your board, I'm just going to kind of go to those positions and to kind of remind you, like, hey, running back, we need one. Who do you got there? Let's start there. Running back, there's a kid in Topeka people have heard of. Is he the only one we need to be worried about right now, or do you have others you throw on your board? He's the only running back. That was short and sweet. I'm trying to think of a way to add to that <laughs> question, but there's really nothing to add to it. So running back, that's the name that's going to be on there. We'll have to see where he fits on the list for K-State. Let's skip down to offensive line. You've been teaching us about junior college names. There's still high school names out there. A lot of guys with length that tackle. What names, not necessarily what spots, but what names do you think you're probably going to work into your board along the offensive line? Uh, most of it's junior college at this point. You have the offensive tackle of Butler is Jeremiah Crawford. Right. Uh, the offensive guard of Butler that they just offered in Dawson Del Forge. They also offer the offensive tackle of Independence is Jeremy Flax. Right. Independence Community College, that is. Uh, and I'm Ariante Ursary, the Minnesota commit from Kansas City, is kind of still in the mix, as well as 
Brian Burns. He doesn't have yep. an offer. Uh, he's out of Bishop Miege. They saw him last week. Uh, Parker Clements yep. is a kid they offered, I think, in uh, August. That's probably he's still from South, Car- well. South Carolina kid. Is that yeah. who that is? Yep, still yeah, South Carolina for sure. So I think you just gave us six names, if I remember it right, for three spots. So that feels good. You know, if you're K State, you're trying to fill three spots, and you have six names you've done some legwork with. The first one you mentioned, Crawford. We saw him at camp this summer, didn't we? D Y didn't he come to camp at K State? The Butler tackle. Yeah, he uh, camped at K State, and it's just something that they wanted to see more film of. So a few games into the season at Butler, they liked what they saw and pulled the trigger. And he was here this past week, wasn't he, on a visit? When I say this past week, unofficial. was he for the Baylor game? Unofficial for the Baylor game? So I'm at seven, right? I'm keeping track. We're at seven names. Uh, defensive tackle, we have down two spots. I know some junior college influence here again. What names do you think might fit on your list that are defensive tackles? Uh, Derek Newton at a uh-huh. Butler. He was originally at Kansas State. Uh, Robert Hentz, he's on an official visit yep. this weekend. Uh, he's from Northwest Mississippi Community College. And then uh, there's well, there's one more. You say Latrell Bankston? Latrell Bankston uh-huh. from Perfect. Hutchinson. And then they're, they're actually uh, recruiting a defensive tackle from Idaho, a high schooler. Uh, his father played at K-State, Jerry Togiai. Yep, this I remember is him. Tanoa Togiai. So you've got four names there at that position. So that takes us up to 11 total that I've counted, at least in positions of need. Again, I keep repeating this, and I'm sorry for people who listen to the whole show. But, yeah, there might be some names at positions – we didn't mention whether it's wide receiver, maybe it's a linebacker, whatever. You know, on DUI's top 20, there aren't one of these from these lists. Uh, let's skip down, Derek, to defensive end. You kind of talked about a couple of guys listed as linebackers on their profiles who are certainly DN prospects for K-State. In the last one, last thing that you mentioned, Fisher and Harrell. Anybody at DN beyond that we need to be thinking about? Going through it, they uh, Linnell Carr. Okay, yep, the West Virginia commit who certainly likes K-State too still. Yeah, and uh, I think that was probably be it. I think that they're – feel comfortable about landing enough out of that group. Right, right. So that would take us up to 14 names. Oh, I did forget one. The junior college kid out of Butler, Josh Davies Balligan, yep. also yep. has been offered by K-State recently. So I would imagine he is in the mix. Uh, he will be maybe a borderline qualifier. So that would give us a total of 15 names. Corner. Um, there's some that I remember that I've read from your notebook this morning, but rattle off some names at corner and nickel, like you said, uh, for us for this K-State recruiting class. Dejon Harrison, he's taking his official visit this weekend. He's out of Hutto, Texas, really close to Deuce Vaughn and his family. Uh, that's probably someone that's going to be in the class. They're still recruiting Fabian Marks. Even though they might have pulled back from him, I think that they've, they've turned the heat back up, and that probably has more to do with Kenyon Reed's departure. So those two make a lot of sense at cornerback with you know Nickel also being in the equation. Dante Manning is a corner at a Ray Town. That had Kansas State in, in his updated list after you know decommitting from Oklahoma. I don't think that they're going to get him, but he's probably someone that is still being recruited. And then Damon Hill, maybe a backup option at this time. He, he is a corner out of the Tampa area, Palmetto, Florida, where he, he's had an offer for a while. They have him visiting, I think, later in November, so that probably shows where he's at on the on the pecking order at this time. Did a poor job of listening to you there because I leaned over to tell Flando, hey, man, you could leave, you know. Mm-hmm. Like He's like, no, I'll stay. I'm like, well, you could leave, and he's still here. So um, how many names did you say there? Do you know how many names you said roughly? Uh, Hill, Manning, Harrison, and Marks. That's four, mm-hmm. but two of them being far more realistic at this time. Right. So as many up, up to 19 more, 19 total, the names you've said that would, would fit just within the positions we talked about being needs. Oh, you got it. So – the GFBC, if you haven't had it here, it comes with – I'm going to read it like I'm an advertiser. I know – well, the thing, reason I get it, it comes with the actual, like – I think it's appropriate to say, you know, the Mexican bottled Coke that has all the real sugar in it and that kind of stuff. So that's very good. Coca-Cola de Mexico. And Old Forester. Is Old Forester good, D.Y.? Is that a good thing? You know what that I is? I assume that I mean, it is. Assume I, it is. I'm so, not really sure. So D.Y. is a bit of a fancy guy as far as his drinks. You know, so he may not like this. He may like it. He may. Oh, he nodded. Yeah, it was good. That was a sincere nod, too. Um, so safety. <laughs> safety. And safety. I think it's just one, and for all intents and purposes, I think they already think they have him. The I mean, Memphis commit. T.J. Right? Smith. Smith. Yeah. Yep. So, ironically, we need a list of 20. You, get, you gave me 20 names. Those at Just the positions we said in segment one were needs. You already have 20 names. So I, I know it's tough to just make this board um, on the spot here on the pod. I know you've done some work on it, so I have a question, a couple questions before we get to it. When you're making it, so do you have any names you expect to put on your top 20 
that did not that could have been you know quarterback, receiver, tight end, linebacker. You no know, spot we didn't say. We have any names in your top twenty not from those spots? Yes. Te- Tevin McKelvey's one. Okay, no, line, linebacker Gardner Edgerton, right? I'm a big Tevin McKelvey guy. Yep. His profile rivals still list him as a pro style quarterback, which he's not. He is absolutely a linebacker. If you, so, if you see that and you wonder, well, what's the deal with Tevin McKelvey? So McKelvey will be on your 20. Anybody else at a non position of what we believe to be like a a real need on your top 20? I do not believe. I'm just gonna so. rattle off nobody like nobody like Connor O'Toole at receiver. I know he's kind of beyond. Yeah, you know. I actually made a mark down of guys that I removed from from what I would have had on it last week would be Talik Jackson, but he was a defensive end. Yep. And that's more because there's no offer yet. Uh, right. No offer yet. It just seems like there's guys ahead of him that are actually likely to be in the class. Connor O'Toole is a guy I removed, and then Johnny Noon out of Tampa, who's uh, coming to yeah. Maryland, defensive tackle, yep. where it just looks like they're going in a different direction there. Okay, so do you have it like listed out? Do you want to walk through it one through twenty? Do you want to try it? Yeah, I'll start at twenty. Work to yeah, one, work your I way up. Listed yeah. out, uh, and I will say two that narrowly missed it that I also considered was George Qualls, receiver at Butler. No offer yet, but I think yeah. they are recruiting him. So if they do get to a point where they miss at some of those eleven or twelve that we, you know, the needs that we've listed off, that you know he could fall in line for one of those spots. And then I didn't list Dante Manning just because. Uh, right. I think that he's probably. Not as likely. That's the one where McKelvey, I had McKelvey instead of Dante Manning. Perfect. Well, I'm just writing down spots to fill in the names as you do it because I might break you up once in a while and say, all right, so now we've gone through five. You already have this many whatevers. So, yeah. And before you start listing them off, too, this is, I'm not trying to grill you. This is like a personal curiosity. So, as you're ranking these 20 guys, what are you taking into account? Is this likelihood to commit? Is this quality of player? Is this positional need? Is it a combination of all? What do you, what goes into your mind when you're ranking this list? Yeah, it's a combination of all. And I've been asked that on the message board, you know, multiple yeah. times. And, and I think I finally have found the best way to describe it. The last time I was asked was last week. It's more of like relevance. Yeah. Because that kind of brings into the picture likelihood, uh, timeliness of maybe when they're going to pop. And then also, uh, position of need yeah so for clarity if somebody's hearing this list and i'm just making it up and you have kai thomas at 17 it doesn't mean you think he's the 17th best player on this list by any stretch correct it just means a combination of all the things you mentioned have him as that's where he fits right now so perfect perfect so give me number 20 dy number 20 on your list parker clements the offensive tackle out of south carolina uh, it's certainly a need. We've, we've gone over that, but there's just been uh, very little buzz on him lately in terms of uh, what's going on between him and Kansas State. I don't think there's an official visit scheduled at this time, and uh, other, other high school offensive tackles seem to have their attention a little bit more, but it's, it's hard to have a list without him on it, though. No doubt about it. Something I meant to say even at the start of this is we understand as people listen to this, we're going to give away a lot of stuff that we share on our message boards here behind our paywall here. We know for people who spend money and pay for the site, that can be annoying, and we respect it. We, we think we do it very rarely. I think maybe we talk about this two or three times a year. We get on here and we do a podcast that gives away a lot of stuff. That's probably paying information. We selfishly want to do it. One, to give a good podcast to listen to for people who pay, the people who don't pay. We love people who don't subscribe to hear this, hear this and say, oh, this is the kind of thing Derek's talking about behind the paywall um, constantly at KSO. But we won't do this often. I mean, so we appreciate the money you give us for your subscription. We don't want to diminish the value by giving away for free. But this will be one where, DY, we're going to say stuff on here that we probably typically wouldn't say on a podcast. Exactly. Okay, number 19 after Parker Clements. Offensive tackle, who's number 19 on your list? I have Brian Burns, the offensive tackle prospect at Bishop Miege. Uh, he was at his game last week. Was not only <laughs> We're not my, laughing at Brian Burns. We're laughing at Flando just saying, Brian Burns. <laughs> not only was I at his game last week against Blue Valley, so was Chris Kleiman and Jason Ray. So he's definitely someone that they had their eyes on. Um, probably lower on the list because he's been on this list for the better part of a month or two and it's, it's still no offer. It doesn't mean one's not coming, but uh, things probably still happen to happen for yep. him to grab one. What about number 18 after two off the tackles at 20 and 19? Uh, Damon Hill, the corner out of Florida. Uh, I think that in terms of likelihood, he's behind some other guys, which is why he owns the 18 spot. But having an official visit uh, scheduled for the West Virginia game at this point means he has to be on this list. No doubt about it. Let's keep moving. We're going to stop after about 15 maybe and then break it down big picture again. But 17, who you got at 17? That's Tevin McKelvey. Uh Linebacker prospect out of Gardner Edgerton, uh, no no offer. It seemed like he came really close to one over the summer after, yeah, we, I thought after he, camping yeah. at K State. He camped with at the same time a Dorian Stevens, a 2021 prospect out of Blue Valley, and worked out you know privately with Scotty Hazelton. Came very close. Someone that they definitely still have their eyes on. 
If it happens for them, it's probably going to be closer to signing day when they have a better idea of their numbers. So that's a little, it's interesting. I'm not, none of this is criticism. I think it's a good talking point here instead of stopping at 17 or 15 or 12 or whatever. But Tevin McKelvey, I love I love Tim McKelvey. I don't know. I've never seen him play in person like you have. I've only seen highlights. I've only seen him at that camp. Uh, I just like, I and mean, there's plenty of things that I care about. I think his build is great. I know he's not very big, but I think he has no bad weight on him. He looks like he's a, got a good frame. He cares about his body. He takes care of his body. I liked his inter, watching his interactions with Scotty Hazleton at camp. You could tell it was a two-way street where he could explain what he was seeing. And Hazel, I mean, I just like that. He's very, very coachable. And I think he's a good, I think he's a good athlete. I mean, I know he's an FCS commit to what, South Dakota State right now? Is South that right? South Dakota. South Dakota, excuse me. So the reason McKelvey's an interesting point is not because I'm going to gush about him, but because you have a guy at number 17 who is both, and again, not criticism, but just showing how this list is fun, who doesn't have an offer and you don't have as a position of need. So that mean, that just kind of speaks a little bit to the what the likelihood of that perhaps developing and what you think of McKelvey as a player. Yeah, I, it, gun to my head just when it comes down to it i think that they're going to figure out a way to get mckelvey in his class because they like him that much we'll see if it unfolds that way and it's another thing and that kind of plays into it that we haven't necessarily discussed either if you're a fringe prospect but you're local or you're from kansas city or you're from kansas you're going to get a little bit of the benefit of the doubt yep no doubt about it so mckelvey at number 17 who do you have at 16 16 of ariante ursary not a whole lot has transpired yet i think that the dialogue has gone from zero to that there's some present at this time with a Minnesota committed at a Ruskin High School in Kansas City. Uh, I think we're still probably quite a ways from that turning the way that they would like if it turns the way that they would like. So there's a lot to play out, but he's probably on the board as a recruitable prospect again, whereas you know, two or right. three months ago, he probably wasn't. And, you know, not to stay on nursery too much, but this is a guy, if you've been following KSO, forever you know how much you know d weiss talked about him but as a prospect you really liked him at camp right he's a, he's I, mean, a, I hate to say it this way but he's a poor man's turner corcoran yeah. he looks like corcoran just exceptionally much more raw where corcoran is so advanced not only with size but his technique and just his skill level that it, it's he's gonna be a rare offensive lineman has a chance to play early makes sense Ursary's probably maybe a two two and a half year project but he has but the at that same point could be but he his potential is not much different than that of Corcoran. Right. Makes sense. Number 15, who you got? 15 is Josh Davies Balligan, the, the Juco defensive end out of Butler. You can argue that this is probably, you know, a uh, best player available because I don't know if they necessarily need a think, Juco. Yeah. think they need to go Juco at this position, but I think it's a guy where he plays at a program they're very familiar with and really liked his film and liked what they've seen in person. So if they can fit him in at the end, they possibly will. He probably has some things to take care of off the field as well. We go from a D end from the Butler Junior College program at number 15. Who do you got at 14? Kai Thomas. So this we all will, know who that yeah, is. We all know who that is. And it's probably safer to, uh, even though this is a free podcast, and we're, we're probably safer to not go deep into this, but that there is discussion still ongoing. Minis I will say this, Minnesota probably did get steered back a little bit in the yep. right direction with him when they hosted him for a visit this past weekend, but I'm, I'm still under the impression there's still conversations being had, and a K-State visit is not completely out of the cards. Number 13. That would be Tanoa Togiai, the defensive tackle out of Rigby, Idaho. His, like we said earlier, his father, Jerry, played at Kansas State. Um, did he play for Bill Snyder? Yes, he did. But Correct. I didn't yeah, know if it was before yep. or after Bill Snyder was, was hired. So he played. I mean, I'm 99 percent sure it was. Just, yeah, it was definitely after Snyder's hired. I'm just trying to make sure it wasn't didn't leak into prints or something. But I don't think it did. I think it was. Yeah. 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 And this one's kind of an interesting thing because I he is a member of the LDS Church, and missions are very important part of that process. Yep. And it sounds like he intends to take one immediately after high school. So even whoever does sign him, and Utah and BYU appropriately are going to be quite the competition for someone uh, of his you know belief system right but even if let's say kansas state signed landed to know togi december or february or whatever it is it might It'll not have them until a couple years but it could be a you know a physically more mature player at that point yeah for sure, too. it's, it's always like, interesting when you see those guys on byus and utahs and whatnot it's like at the nba draft where you draft and stash it exactly could be a little bit of that exactly yeah. nice number 12 after the draft and stash <laughs> I have Jeremy Flax, the offensive tackle at Independence Community College. He was actually offered this week, so admittedly don't know a ton about him or where he may lean. He has a few other Power 5 offers, but he's one of only three or four 
JUCO offensive tackles that they've offered that is uncommitted and that they're clearly pursuing uh, having offered this week. So he belongs on the list, but we probably need to learn a little bit more about him and where he's leaning and what he is as a prospect, but he's certainly high up on their wish list. That is the fourth offensive tackle so far in the last, what, eight, nine spots. The highest one, of course. Uh, number 11, where are we going to? That would be Latrell Bankston, the defensive tackle from Hutchinson Community College. So, the, I mean, if you look at the top 20 as it unfolds, it's probably going to be pretty Juco heavy because they, I think they got a lot of their high school needs probably out of the way by the summer when they, you know, got 18 commits. So this is Juco heavy. It doesn't mean they're going to sign 10 Juco players, right. but that's kind of where their needs lie at this point. Latrell Bankston probably – not as likely as some of the other Juco defensive tackles you'll hear about later. That's why he's just 11th, but he does plan. It will be an unofficial visit when he visits for Oklahoma game, not an official visit. He said he's already been to K-State, so he doesn't think he needs to take an official visit there. Nice. Leave the, those five open for other schools, which kind of means maybe Kansas yeah. State's, you know, not, not necessarily on the outside looking in, but definitely in competition with a variety of other schools. Would sure make it feel that way. You mentioned the Juco thing. When we get to the end where we kind of lay out with 11 we'd pick to fill it, it will also kind of answer the national natural question that people will ask you on the board or whatever of how many Juco's. Um, it at least will give us a look, at least in a, a, perhaps a dream scenario, what it would end up being. So after Bankston, we hit the top 10. Who's number 10? Uh, Jalen Harold uh, listed That's as too a, low. Yeah, listed as a linebacker. I just like him a lot. In the rivals database, he's a, being recruited as a defensive end. Attends Berkeley Prep in Tampa, Florida. If that sounds familiar, yep. it's because it's the same high school that they got Joshua Youngblood from, and somewhere where Courtney Messingham certainly has had a lot of good fortune recruiting, both in North Dakota State and in a short time in Manhattan. I think this is more likely than people are giving credit for, but. I think that a likely competitor for him will be Michigan. That makes it a little bit more of a challenge. I think that's the only official visit he has set at this point. We move into the single digits at number nine, following Jalen Harrell, actually leading Jalen Harrell. Who is this? This is the highest uh, ranked Juco offensive tackle on my board at this time. It's Jeremiah Crawford uh, at a Butler Community College. I think this is probably would be the easiest one for them to land. He's a three by three. The, the issue, he probably has work to do outside of the football field right. as well, but assuming that gets cleared up, he'll likely be playing in Manhattan. It's the fifth offensive tackle. Again, this is not a criticism of your list, just to the listeners to understand the, the importance. That's the fifth offensive tackle listed in the last 12 players so far. Move up to number eight. Who do we have here? That's Linnell Carr. It's the defense event committed to West Virginia. He goes to DeSmet High School, DeSmet Jesuit High School in St. Louis. You saw him in St. Louis this year. Yeah, I've seen him two or three times. Yeah. Good player. Uh, for for normal programs, he might be a tweener, but he probably fits pretty well in Kansas State system as a defensive end. Uh, certainly someone that I thought, and I think Kansas State thought, that they were going to land in the spring. Um, he visited Kansas State, then visited West Virginia, and kind of committed to them at the time, probably because he was still in the wait-and-see mode at Kansas State. After waiting and seeing, it sounds like he's liked what he saw, so... If he visits for the Oklahoma game, the official visit, like it is scheduled, I think he flips, but these things are fluid, so I'm sure, although that's scheduled, it, it still, you got to wonder, you don't believe it until he steps foot on campus. Because it's like you taught 11 a.m. game, and yeah. he's out, and I mean, he's, he's what, six, seven hours away. Yeah. Right, and, and it's an 11 a.m. game, and he's someone that's been kind of unpredictable the entire uh for the entire uh, his entire cycle, he's been an unpredictable recruit. So, out of the last 13 players that DY has given you, four are committed to other schools. If you count Tevin McKelvey with his FCS commit to South Dakota, so we talk a lot too about you know who's going to flip, when are they going to flip, how many will K State lose? K State can still lose players too. We talked about this yesterday on the game, but there's none you would necessarily immediately say, "Oh, I feel really worried that player Y." I never say player X because that's our player X. That player Y is going to leave. But on the flip side, you have four names. Three, you know, three FBS ones mm -hmm. that K-State's still working on at least. Yeah, and going to that, like we, I think we talked about it, it was, I don't know if it was on a podcast or somewhere else, where Kansas State is one of the, probably one of the few or rare schools right now that has yet to lose a commit. Yep. It is very rare. And because of that, even though I don't see any imminent, I would still be surprised if they go through this if entire cycle happen. without losing one. But, yeah, they're, they're sitting in a pretty good spot. Seven left after Linnell Carr, number seven on your list, D.Y., Fabian Marks, he is a guy that they're recruiting for the nickel or corner, probably nickel. 
He's he's out of Richmond, Texas. They've recruited him hard for quite a while. It seemed like maybe they started to fade away from him, but I don't think that's the case, at least not now. And he's probably someone that has the luxury of Kenyon Reed leaving. I think that that spot is probably why the Heat's been turned back up on Fabian Marks. I was going to say, I'm not trying to – they've always liked him. I mean, I'm not not trying to say this is a kid they weren't – we're happy to move on from because we've always seen him on your list. We've always seen him talked about. But, yeah, it's interesting. You can really see how it works where you kind of wonder and then spot opens, boom, that kid, you know, right back to the top. Number six, D.Y. Kershaw and Fisher, like Linnell Carr, listed as a linebacker in the Rivals database, uh, but being recruited as a defensive end. He is from Slidell, Louisiana, uh, same place, and Kurtz will want me to say it, same place as Daniel, Daniel Sams. Sams. Correct. Um, former yeah. Kansas commit, too, right, this guy, Kershaw, Kershaw Fisher? Fisher yeah. Former Kansas Not commit. Not Daniel Sams. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah that kind of confused me there. Yeah. Kershaw Fisher is a former KU commit. Uh, I have high, him higher than Linnell Carr. I think they would take both, but I have him higher than Carr just because I think he's more likely. He visits for the Oklahoma game, an official visit. I'd be surprised if he's left that without being committed to the Cats. Just five left, top five of DY's top 20 that we're going to go down and make out what would be you know, a perfect ideal class. Make out? Did I say that? Make <laughs> out? Make out? Yeah, we're going to make out. Make out? I was going to say make out what would be you know, the top five, but I don't care. I said it how I said it, so let's move on. Uh, number five, D.Y. Robert Hentz. You guys both looked at me immediately. I was like, what did I say? You had a pause. Like, I mean, <laughs> I looked at you guys. I was like, anyway, sorry. Uh, Robert Hentz, uh, I don't want to take away from him because I read some good stuff about you. Maybe a top three D- T- uh, D- Juco D lineman in the country, D.Y. Is that what you were saying? The junior college coaches that I've talked to really think highly of him. I know that comes from the junior college coaches in Mississippi, not just someone you know watching him from afar in Texas or Kansas. Guys that are actually facing him on a weekly weekly basis. So uh, a guy I really like because I, I take their word for it. Uh, I trust what they say. His film looks pretty good, and he is visiting this weekend on an official visit for the TCU game. Now there's three defensive tackles kind of in the mix. We got uh, Latrell Banks and a Hutch. We already mentioned him. We'll yep. mention Derek Newton later. Yep. Robert Hentz is probably right in the middle in terms of likelihood, but one I admittedly have had a tough uh, time getting a read on. But I think Kansas State has done a great job in this recruitment because I think it was uh, probably not a. I don't know if it was a strategy, but it just kind of fell this way. But I think it's great for them to get him on campus this soon. Only four left. Like you said, one will be Derek Newton. Is Derek Newton number four? He is not. Who's number four? Dawson Del Forge, the offensive guard that they've recently offered at a Butler Community College. I will say, and I know others have made the same observation, I was a little surprised that they went yeah. Juco offensive guard. I didn't think they would. But I think they would like two Juco offensive linemen. At least one has to be a tackle, maybe not both. But they would take two Juco tackles if that presented itself. I think they're going to take a guard, though, because if you offer a j- offensive lineman, Juco offensive lineman from Butler Community College, right. and one that is from Wamego High School, uh, one, he's probably going to want to go to Kansas State, right. and two, Kansas State's not going to tell him no. No, I mean, you think about it, too, I, I would have for a long time said no on the interior. I mean, we saw who this kid we saw at Hutch, um, Osman Trail, who ended up in Miami, who we thought K-State, you know, from the little we knew, could have had a shot, you know, at least at being in that battle for him. Uh, but we weren't sure if interior line. But you think about it. I mean, Tyler Mitchell's a senior. Adam Holtorf's a center, but he's a senior. You do lose a couple. You Evan know, Curl. Evan Curl's a senior. Shoot, so all three interior starters. So it does make sense. Even though a guy like Revis has played well, you know, you have him back and Noah Johnson, and you still need more than two or three guys. We've learned that this year. So we only have three spots left. I'm not going to ask you if every one of them's Derek Newton, but who's number three? Derek Newton. Gosh dang it, I knew it would be. <laughs> Derek Newton, dude's tackle out of Butler. I tell you what, he is someone that might end up with a 20 to 25 sh- offer sheet list. Mm. He, I think he's gotten four offers alone just this week. Kansas State well, wrap was, it up now. Then man. was either the first or the second. Um, it might get tougher to land him as it goes on. I assume they're trying to land him, and I assume they probably think they're going to land him. And he's probably someone that, when this initially started, thought he would end up at Kansas State too. Um, I sure think he will, but at the same time, it's going to get tougher and tougher as time goes on. Um, I think that there's a chance that he's also a top three or top five defensive tackle in the junior college game at this point, too. I have a number three because of need, but also because of likelihood. I mean, when he got his offer, just the way he responded to it and just the way his former teammates at Kansas State responded to it and the way he was responding to them, it sure seemed like a done deal. I'm not saying it's not, but... There is a little concern on my part. I would still lean him towards being a wildcat, but it's not going to probably be a slam dunk. It's not automatic. 
So, DY, I've been paying good attention. I want to show you something just so Flando can vouch for me here. I've got my stuff written down here, you know, the list, that kind of stuff. I didn't write down the 20 names you gave me earlier. Did not write them down. But I'm doing the 20 here, Flando. I know who the top two are. I, in my head, have remembered who's left, and I know who they are. And I'm going to guess what order you have them. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Is number two Dejon Harrison? No. Gosh, dang it. Is it TJ Smith? It's TJ Smith. Oh, no. I. Uh, well, you're wrong. Okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't care. To Jerry Smith goes also goes by TJ Smith, which is easier for me. So I say TJ Smith. He is a Memphis commit from Powder Springs, Georgia, which is a suburb of Atlanta. I know that because that's where my girlfriend is from. Uh, well, congratulations, uh, you have a girlfriend. <laughs> you know, way to, way to go. Uh, he's We're all someone proud of you. Where <laughs> it would be a complete shock to everyone involved oh, if he did not commit to Kansas State on his official visit this weekend. In fact. If you talk to the right people, he probably already is kind of. That's why committed. I thought you'd have number one. I think you'd have number one on there for that reason. I have Dejon Harrison. Tell me about Dejon Harrison. Uh, really good, really highly ranked. 5.73 stars. Right. So if you were same to commit to K State. Her- Jeremiah Harris. Same as Jeremiah. Jalen Harrell, I think, too, maybe. Yeah. Five, yeah. So yeah. if you were to commit to K State, would be one of the highest rated commits. Someone that they probably pursued longer than yep. TJ Smith uh, from Hutto, Texas. Could probably play a variety of positions, multiple positions. That's how he was described to me. Uh, and I don't think that they're putting him, pigeonholing him yet on where he's going to play, but someone that they really, really like, and he really, really likes them. Also visiting this weekend along with TJ Smith, along with Robert Hintz, along with Tanoa Togiai. And it would, I wouldn't say as much of a shock as it would be with TJ Smith, but I would expect. Dejon Harrison to be committed to K State within the next week or two, and if it wasn't, Ooh, if it, it wasn't, in. I'd start to get a little concerned. Okay, Flanders said, "Lock it in." So uh, we're gonna get to our what's a good name? Our eleven in heaven, uh, you know, like a dream scenario. Um, elite eleven. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna pick our eleven, but I want to ask you something before we get to that. You can't, it's impossible. People ask questions, and I do all the time, too. I'm not making fun of people who ask yeah. this question on the board. But, it's like, how many surprises do you expect? And I know what your mind first says. Well, if they're surprises, thank you so much. If they're surprises, I wouldn't expect them. That said, so we have 11 spots we think left in this class. We've rattled off 20 names. You've had three or four more that you said on this pod that aren't on that list. What I'm trying to get to is what would you guess, just from your experience covering recruiting, how things change, out of the 11 spots left, how many will be a name that we haven't even said yet? Like two, three, like what number would you say? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, you rattled off two or three. Yeah. So, yeah. So, as we're, we're going to do this activity. We're going to get you know, 11 names down, but you have to understand. We understand. It's October, well, I don't know what it is, 18th right now today. Uh, it is October 18th. We're probably going to release it today, too, Flanders. They're going to lose um, some of these kids. Right. They're not going to fill all those 11 needs in December. Right. They're going to have to fill two, maybe three in February as right. well. Right. There'll be new names. Exactly. So, the, this is not a prediction at all of what the 11 will be. It's an example of if K-State finished this class out with kids that really wanted right now, what would it be? So here's how I'm going to do it, D.Y. I'm, we're not going to rank these in order. We're not going to rank them from most important to least important. We're just going to pick the 11 kids that would finish the class. And I'm going to term this because I know I don't want it to be most realistic. I want it to be – I'll give you these rules. They have to be on your top 20, and they have to be the player you think is best at this position. And then we can get into two in some positions, like how many JUCOs, how many whatever. But so I'll do it this way. I'll just walk you through it. So running back, we have one. There's only one on your list. So we're putting, I assume we're putting Kai Thomas on our list of 11. Or would you not? I, w- I would not as of now because I'm not, I don't think, that, well, or I guess we're not going to likelihood here. Not likelihood, right. We're just saying if they fill the, well, we have 11 needs we say they have. If yeah. we say one's at running back, would you say you Kai, want that to be yeah, Kai Thomas? Yeah, it has to be. Got yeah. it. So Kai Thomas. Would be on that list of uh, 11 that we'd want to finish out with. Down to offensive line. Now, you, have, you, get, you need to put three in because we've settled on the number of three. So considering all these things, D.Y., like Juco versus high school, considering just Juco versus high school and what you perceive to be level of quality, not likelihood. So if you think Ursary is the best but less likely than Clements, still give me Ursary if that makes sense. Right. So give me the three offensive linemen you would add to this class from your group. Ariante Ursary. Uh-huh. Dawson Del Forge. Okay. Because I do think they'll go interior. No doubt. And they have now to go tackle. tackle they have to go to Juco from. tackle, so it's got to be Crawford or Flax. Yep. That, I would say Crawford. I don't know enough about Flax, to be honest. Love it. That's <laughs> what I would admit. No, but that makes perfect sense. We're not here to we're not here to fib. We're here to be mm-hmm. very, you know, transparent about how we do this kind of thing. So um, we're moving on to D tackles. You had two down. I mean, so you've got options with Hints, Newton. Bankston, 
Togiai. So you've got two out of that group. Well, they'll, go, they'll definitely go two Juco, so I would go Newton and Hentz. Okay. And I think you could also, if we wanted to do this, we could add Togiai because he won't right. count against the number. Right. I mean, yeah, so they certainly could take him. I'm going to put a little star by Togiai and say that at the end, that he may not be in our 11, but they, <laughs> they could probably him. sign him <laughs> yeah. and take 30 with Togiai being the 30th. There you go. There you go. Um, we've got six spots of our 11 field so far. Kai Thomas, Ariante Ursary. What's Del Ford's first name? Dawson. Dawson. Oh, that's a great. How to forget that. Crawford, Newton, Hintz. All right. So now let's move it on to D end. We need two. Uh, you got Harold's got to be one, right? Is Harold? Harold and what do you got? I'm not going to do this. I'm not. I'm not going to steal your thunder. Who are the two? If you go best. Yeah, best. My the two best. my opinion would be Harold. You got you got Carr. You got Fisher. That's it, I think. So you've got we well, got the JUCO at Butler, Davies Balgon. It's like he's a better because he's older. I would I would go Carr though. Yeah, so would I. I would have said Harold and Carr. So bam, wrote them down. Now this is gonna get pretty easy. We need a safety. That's gonna be Smith because that's the only one on the yeah. board, right? And then uh, and then corners. We need two corners. I don't. We don't have a bunch on here. We have Harrison. Cause, cause, Obviously, he's going to be one. Because they were slam dunks, and that's why I didn't have any other ones. So it's got to be Harrison and Marks. Right. Okay. So this is actually somewhat easy. So if they were going to finish the class out with 11 people that fit what we believe to be their 11 biggest positional needs remaining in this recruiting class with prospects that are on DY's top 20, all these guys have offers from K-State. Um, they would be Kai Thomas, Ariante Ursary, Dawson Del Forge, Jeremiah Crawford, I almost said Jairus Newton, Derek Newton, uh, Robert Hintz, Jalen Harrell, Linnell Carr, TJ Smith, Dejon Harrison, Fabian Marks. That would be your 11. And that's, that's, that is realistically possible. I mean, now, the chances of that happening are probably 2%. You know what I mean? Because you do the math of you know, getting it's not That's not going to be the last 11. Mm -hmm. But that's a reasonable look at you know, what it could be. You know? Exactly. Who's your favorite guy you left off that's not in that 11? Just your favorite guy. I mean, so I'll tell you, I mean, you could be looking between, you know, Kurt Fisher, you have at number six in your list. He's not in our 11. Could be him. Uh, Bankston at number 11. Flax. You, we, we, don't, we need to learn more about Flax. You've been very transparent about that. Um, uh, probably Bankston. Yeah. McKelvey at 17. I, I, would, I would say that I'm not, like, completely in love with anyone that I necessarily left off. McKelvey's fun. A fun one. Yeah. And a really good kid. So it's kind of a favorite. Uh, maybe someone that I didn't even put on it that's kind of on the periphery. They'd have to get extremely lucky. They're not confident they'll get him. I mean, he probably has Kansas State in his list just for a little bit of fluff as Dante Manning. I was going to say Manning, yeah. Yeah, well, this was a fun activity. So, I mean, you're going to see all this stuff reflected on the website. When you go to the roster and, recruiter, roster and recruiting center, you're going to see the numbers needed at position change. You're going to see guys like Fisher and Harrell moving the defensive end from linebacker. You're going to see some other names pop in, pop out. You'll see a top 20 from, you know, from DY or a big board. We'll probably save that to like Monday or Tuesday on the website, but you'll see it. And then also you're going to have a sense of these 11 names that would kind of fill it out. We'll have a new, if you always notice too, on the front page of our site, go to the bottom. I pretty regularly update a top 10 list of guys basically off DY's top 20. Um, that you can click to see their profiles, and I'll do that off our top 11, too. So, is there anything we didn't cover, D.Y., that you wish we'd have got into this podcast you think we missed? Nothing's really coming to my mind right now. I think the next time you... you oh, yeah. You hear, well, if you hear us next week, not the next time you hear Good it, because there'll be a, there'll be a, a pod that the, the word Flando will be recording with Matt tonight, later tonight, because of the game tomorrow, of course, against TCU. But this time next week, there's probably somebody on this top 20 is going to be committed. Right, that's the thing. If we were talking about before we did this, is like, what's better for shelf life? Do we do it today so we can let people hear it? You know, today, then over the weekend if necessary, and then by Tuesday, there's already three names committed off this. And it, but yeah, we hope people can listen to it as a big picture thing and understand. Oh, now I'm hearing the name T.J. Smith, and he's committed. Well, cross him off then to quote Major League. You know, one of my favorite movies of all time. He's already committed if he's already committed. Um, but I appreciate your work, D.Y., with this. Um, again, thanks to the listeners, both the pay people who get to see this stuff all the time behind a paywall for letting us share it some with, you know, with some free, um, free people's a funny term to say, you know, some non-paying listeners, free loaders. some free loaders, <laughs> just I kidding. We don't think no, we that, don't way. that way, uh, but if you enjoyed this and you're not subscribed, this is really part of the conversation that exists on our site, either in form of articles or on the message board, you'll or get it every, yeah, yeah, chat. You'll get it every week, uh, not just 
three times a year. You'll get it every week. You'll get it every day. And not just for football. Flano's got you covered like a blanket, too, on the basketball side. Mm, like a wet, gross blanket. <laughs> <laughs> but he hit. No, man, I'm, I don't need a joke right now. I mean, I, I'll end it just by saying, like, this is not this is not taking shade at anybody else. There's a lot of, there's a lot of talented people around who cover recruiting, whether it's for K State or other people. But holy cow, you guys are just fantastic. Um, if you don't follow, I mean, at least if you're not a subscriber, follow Dy and Flando on Twitter and read their stuff there. You know, or go to the YouTube page and subscribe there. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie, we'd love to have your business. It's good. It's good for us. It's good for hopefully for the members who are already there because we can do more and travel more, and and I can just put more money in my pocket. That's where it goes. Um, I'm just going to say thanks to Derek Young. Thanks to Flando for coming to dinner with us and now going home and producing this since you stayed the whole time while you do your laundry. Um, And I don't know, man. I just think if there's a thing that we'd ask you, I don't know, man. Like, just, you know, like, I don't know. Like, tell your friends. 